the next subject is the persistence library. So we're going to go back to the PowerPoint presentation and give you a little bit of background on, uh, on persistence. So you know, Coatsys has four different categories of, of variables. You've got your temporary variables. These are based on the stack. These are uh, uh, you know, the variables that are created when you, uh, uh, when you uh, call a function or a method. You know, they're temporary. They, they, are, they only live long enough for the, that call. And they go away. Then you have your static variables, which is you know your global variables, your vars, var in, var outs, everything in all of your function blocks and programs. That's you know most of your variables are are uh, are your static variables. They're on, they're on the heap. You have your retained variables, which are spe special static variables where that have been allocated to a different portion of the heap that's going to be uh, put into a different type of memory, battery backed memory or magneto resistive memory or something like that. And then you have your persistent variables. And these are the variables that actually get stored off to the file system. To, and so then the non-volatile. And these, these can be portable, move to a different system to power up that new system in, with, the, with those variables or, or, or what have you. And that's what I'm going to talk about. That's where the um, uh, code sys, uh, let me turn my laser pointer in there. That's where the control sphere persistence library helps. So, so let's. I'm going to elaborate now just on this last line here, on the persistent uh, uh, techniques. Uh, there's uh, four techniques that I'm aware of for doing that. There's a Coatsys built-in Coatsys persistence. Uh, you know, that's where you check the box or put the flag in, retain, persist. Uh, recipes are a good way of, uh, of doing persistent variables. Uh, my library and uh, the application composer has its own persistent manager, but that only works with the application composer. So each, each of these has their strengths and weaknesses. You'll see that the control sphere really has its strength in an object based. And it's really the only way that I know of to deal with uh, general uh, object based designs in the, in the general sense. So what is an object? So, you know, you know th this is kind of a cross section of a refrigeration plant just to drive home the, the idea that these things are distributed all over the place. So in this case, we've got a plant that has two assembly lines uh, might have more in those. It's got an, uh, in, uh, insulation sections. It's going to have a lot more other sections. We're just showing you one small cross section uh, and only one object in those these analog ends. Obviously, there's going to be more, a uh, lot more design here. There's going to be uh, a lot more other objects. You know, pumps, uh, motors, valves, whatever uh, is in your design. But we're just showing you one small cross section here just to show you how this one object is spread out all over the place. They're all over the place. So how do you deal with that? You know, in the old days, we had to use global variables because they really didn't have any way to distribute the variables and still have some way to deal with them as a centralized service. You know, just like the alarm, the alarm, those, all those distributed alarms, they need to come back to a central service so that they can go to the alarm banner, right? So, so you know, we were forced in the old days to use global variables and so forth keep all the data local, centralized, so that we could deal with these central services. Fortunately, Coatsys, uh, uh, with Coatsys, they've got some cool features that allow us to distribute our variables, but still have central services, like that alarm, uh, object-oriented alarming, or in this case, this uh, configuration. So what's the problem? So the problem is when you have a distributed system, like we have here, we've got a, a plant, it has two reactors. Each reactor has two augers, and each auger has a variable speed motor and a shaft encoder built into it. So, you know, in the old days, we would hard code the uh, I/O for this. So, this shaft encoder it needs to get pulses from the from the shaft encoder, uh, and it also has to have a scaling factor. You know, depending on how, how many pulses per liter of materials being augered out, or something along those lines. So, so we need to. We need to connect it to an I/O point, and we have to give it a configuration. So in the old days, you know, we just uh, hard code that variable, uh, that global variable here, hard code some uh, uh, parameter here, and uh, we'd be done, we'd, be, we'd be done. But unfortunately, in this kind of a system, if we were to hard code these in here, they would be permanent. So this auger would be connected to that I/O, and this auger would be connected to this I/O. So the only way we could really make this this work is to make a copy of this auger. Uh, four copies, because there's there's two augers in each reactor, so there's really four of these augers in here. We have to make copies of those and hard code that information into each copy. So, I mean, now we've got duplicate code, which is something you'd never want to have, and we're 
and the object is no longer reusable. So how do we fix that? Well, CodeSys has this really great technique for handling the IO. It was really genius the way they came up with this at the time. Uh, and the way they do it is instead of mapping your IO to a uh, global variable, like we always have in the past, you do a map it using a full path name. Uh, so here we have the plant, we have the R1 reactor, the A1 auger, uh, and the SE1 shaft encoder. So we map this to, uh, to uh, app.plant.r1, uh, r1, dot a1, a1, dot se1, se1, dot pulse fi, that input. So now that IO point has been mapped to that instance. We do the same thing for this instance. The only difference is now there's an A2 here. We do the same thing for the second reactor, R2. And the only difference is the R2. So we've mapped, now we've mapped the IO points, the central, these centralized IO points are mapped out to these, um, all these distributed objects. That's great. Unfortunately now, so that's the good news. The bad news is CODESYS doesn't have any way to do that for parameters. So, so that's where I have to create my own library to do that. And that's, this library will be available on the CODESYS store before the next tech talk uh, sometime in the, in the near future. Uh, so what this does is it creates, a, you create a, a spreadsheet. You actually just, uh, you can write the spreadsheet out. It creates a template. You go in and modify the parameters to whatever values you want them to be. Same thing that uses the same full path names here. And then they get written out there just like the IO does. Uh, so, you know, it's, so you end up with something that looks a lot like this. Uh, and uh, so the, each one of these is an instance of that analog input, A in, and they have these certain parameters and those parameters get written, written out. And the only step we really need to do, uh, actually, I'm gonna show you this live. So we'll skip this and I'll just show you this, this one live here. Uh, okay, here we go. So here we have some traffic lights and let's look at what one of these traffic lights look like. So it, it, each traffic light has these four configurable inputs, how much time to spend on each light, a color, and where to start, how to, what state to start in. So we can go online and then, then of course, and then we have to implement the CCS library. So again, you uh, implement the configure management, you right click on that, say implement interfaces, and it'll put these in for you. And then again, it's just like before you follow the instructions that are in up in the in declaration area up here. Basically what you're doing is uh, it's going to send you a, an, uh, uh, an array, and then you just put the members into the parameters where they belong. Same thing uh, 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 to write the CSV file. You have to do these, these steps to take the data, convert it to string and put it into the array and it takes care of that for you. And that's about it. So, the, and again, these steps are just a one-time deal. You, one time and you're done. You never have to do this again. So what does this look like uh, online? So we'll just go online with this. Uh, we got a, a, a visualization here. And uh, so now you'll see, uh, uh, and actually the, the error message popped up, but you didn't probably didn't see it, indicating that it couldn't find the configuration file. Uh, and you'll notice this traffic light is really bad. It's uh, uh, green in all four directions. So the reason for that is they haven't, these objects have not been configured yet. So the easiest way to configure them is we just, uh, now we do have uh, uh, this uh, visualization to help, help you write the, write the file and read the file. Uh, but I've also duplicated these buttons here just to make it easier. So the easiest thing to do is just, uh, we're gonna say, write the, write the CSV file. Now we're gonna go to the uh, CodeSys directory. Okay, we're, we're down in the, uh, we're looking at the file system on the runtime uh, and we're looking at the PLC logic and the persistent starting. And you'll notice that now there's a daytime.csv file here. Okay, we're gonna look at that. Uh, and we're going to, and then you'll, you'll notice the starting state here. All these values are the default values. So for both the east and the north, it says start at, at red, but we want to uh, start at, uh, 
at, uh, sorry, green. Okay, and then we just save that. Uh, and then we just come back in and we tell it to read. Uh, so I could either do an online warm reset, which automatically reads the CSV file, or I could have said to read the, the CSV file. E either way, either way works. And then you'll notice that uh, the lights will now begin to work properly after 10 seconds or so of the red. You'll see that, uh, uh, oh, sorry, they will not work until I actually start it. And then the 10 seconds passes. Well, they're, they're, see, now they're working properly because they've been configured. Uh, same thing, you know, I could come in here and I could uh, change some of these values either through the HMI if I wanted, or uh, so we'll just change uh, change some of these. Uh, so I want uh, I want these these lights to behave differently during uh, rush hour. So I'm going to change some of these times. And now I could either do this uh, through the uh, HMI like I'm doing here, or I could do that in the CSV file. Either way works, whichever one makes more sense. I've got some customers that do both. As some of the parameters are, are hard-coded into the CSV file. Some of the parameters the operator can change the, is to the HMI. Uh, either, either way works. Uh, and um, All right, so I've got these. Now I'm gonna write a rush hour file with these new parameters. Uh, and you'll notice that this thing is not behaving right well because I've changed these things out of sequence. Okay, so that's, uh, but now we go back and look and we'll see now we have a rush hour. Okay, and the rush hour now has these new parameters in it, these new values in it that I just changed. Okay, um, I don't need to save that. And then we come back in and we can uh, read, we can go back to the, uh, the daytime we can read that. Those are the daytime ones. We can read the rush hour. Notice they've changed and they re they resynchronize themselves. So that's uh, and we could also, by the way, uh, put in an external file in here. You know, uh, the external file feature you could take that CSV file, uh, put it into the project as an external file, and then when this project gets downloaded, that file will actually get downloaded uh, into this directory right there. All right, so uh, let's see. So uh, then, then you know, again, the beauty of this is it's so easy. You know, we come in, we 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 uh, just come into our interchange. Say we want to add another. So we've got this. Is, this is the lights for our north entrance ramp. Let's say we want to do south entrance ramp, south exit ramp. Sorry. So we just do that. We make we, uh, create an instance of it. Connect it to the reset. Uh, we go back to the visualization. We need to make a copy of this visualization, right? And then we need to uh, set it up now for uh, instead to go to the south exit ramp, the new one, okay? Uh, and then away we go. And uh, so now we'll, uh, let's see, we'll go back online, uh, log in with a download. It's going to take a, take a couple of seconds. And then we, uh, so now the, now you'll notice that uh, these lights, the north ones are still working fine because they read the, read the CSV file. Oops, sorry, got to start. Uh, but these, the south ones will not be working right because they haven't been configured. But that's not a problem. We just, uh, the easiest thing to do is just say, uh, so make sure we are daytime. Yeah, we are daytime. So we're just going to write the daytime. You see all green, not good. We're going to write the daytime. And we're going to go back. Uh, to our CSV file, open up the daytime. Now you'll notice the, the two additional instances of the lights are here all automatically, okay? Uh, but you'll notice it still has a default for the light. The default for any light is red state. So we're just change that back in here. Again, I could do a warm reset or I could just say uh, read and now everything will be, uh, will be correct for the, uh, for both both sets of lights. Okay, uh, so that is a library. Uh, uh, it's it will also it will be very similar to the object oriented alarming library. There'll be uh, a couple of options with some fixed number of uh, of objects that could be configured, and then there will be the source code will be available also for unlimited, so you can do anything you want with that. I recommend the source code. It's it's nice because you can I mean, you can single step into it. You can debug it. Uh, you know, you don't have to rely on anybody but yourself for support on it or modifying it or enhancing it or 
whatever you, whatever you want to do to it.